Hi everyone, here's a quick video on the very basics of Adobe Illustrator and our first fill and stroke worksheet. So here we are at my website. Um, there are some videos to review your workspace setup, basic use, navigation, how to move around your page, zoom in, zoom out. And below that we have these worksheets and here's going to be our first worksheet right here for Tools 1A Fill and Stroke. Uh, this is an example of what it should look like at the end. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click on here and it's going to open up our file. And it's going to give you a preview from my Google Drive and we are going to click download. Now, if you are in my class, this is going to download to your OneDrive downloads folder. It is now going to be backed up in the cloud as we change that in our Chrome settings. So we can just go ahead and open up right here from the bottom of Google Chrome. And I'm going to click on it once and it's going to open up in Adobe Illustrator. All right, so here's what we need to do. On this first one, we need to make sure we have our stroke toolbar open. And we do that by going to Window, Stroke, and we also have to click Show Options. Let's go ahead and do that. Window, Stroke, we're gonna come down to our Stroke Toolbar. And mine is actually expanded, but I'll show you when you, the first time you open up your Stroke Toolbar, it is gonna be collapsed like this. You come right here to these four lines, click Show Options, and it gives you the full options available. All right, let's go ahead and check out the rest of our instructions up here at the top. It also mentions, do not resize the squares. We're only changing the stroke settings for this worksheet. All right, so I'll move this over here. And again, I'm using spacebar to go to my hand tool and move it up, move it back and move my page around. I like to use my magnifying glass or Z for zoom on my keyboard, Z for zoom. Click and drag around what you want to see and it'll zoom into what you want. All right, so this first square, we want a fill only. So I'm going to select the first square, and we're going to change it to yellow fill, which is yellow on the inside. Here is our fill, and here is our stroke. If you have your properties toolbar open, it's actually here also. Here's your fill, and here's your stroke, and whatever your preference, whatever is easiest to you, they both do the exact same thing. Um, and as a reminder from previous video, if you hit X on your keyboard, it switches this back and forth. This is to change the fill. Hit X, switch it, change the stroke, and back and forth. All right, so our first square, I'm going to select it. You must click. It doesn't have a fill, so you have to click on the border. And I'm going to change this to yellow. And this is fill only, so I need to get rid of this stroke. So I'm going to click on the stroke and then click on the little slash, which is none. Or you could also do slash on your keyboard, which is the question mark, and get rid of that. All right, deselect, click on the white area. We have a fill only. Spacebar. Move your page up. This one is going to be stroke only. Right now, the stroke is in black. So I'm going to change this to light blue. Let me move this color toolbar right to the side. I'm going to go to my swatches. I believe it's this light blue. It's as close as you can get. Now, on this worksheet, let me actually zoom out a little bit. Control minus. It tells you at the bottom that this is actually a five-point stroke. So on this square, I'm going to come up to my weight for my stroke. It's either right here on your stroke toolbar or up across the top under your controls, and we could change this to a five-point stroke. And there we go. Now this one, we're going to do a fill and stroke, so we're going to do the same thing. Change it to light blue, five-point, switch this, go to my fill color or X on your keyboard, and change this to yellow. All right, so again, all we're doing is matching the square that's next to it. Okay, the align, the align to center, Inside and outside buttons are right here on your stroke toolbar under align. Now align stroke, if you just hold your mouse, it tells you align stroke to center, align stroke to inside, align stroke to the outside. And that basically just changes the location of where the stroke is. Oh, and this one down here at the bottom, this is a 10 point stroke. So I'm going to change all of these at once actually to orange. So I'm going to do that by holding shift on my keyboard. This is a shortcut. I click on my first square. Hold shift, and that's going to allow me to select the second square and the third square at the same time. They are all selected. I could change them all to orange. Let's switch this right here, and I'm going to switch this to orange and to a 10-point stroke. Drop, arrow, drop down, 10-point. Okay, these don't look exactly the same, though. This first one is because this one is a line stroke to center, which is, as we come check, it's right here on this first one. The second one, a line stroke to inside, switch it to this second one, and it puts that stroke on the inside of the path. And on the same, this one, it'll move the stroke to the outside of the path. 
All right, on to the next one is talking with our corners, which our corners are the next one right here on our stroke toolbar. There is miter join, round join, and bevel join. So I'm going to do one other thing. Instead of holding shift and grabbing all three, you could also click and drag. And as long as you touch the square, touch the first square, touch the second square, touch the third square, we could select all three. I'm going to change them to a pink stroke. This is also a 10 point down here at the bottom. I'll change the stroke up here at the top, 10 point. And now I just need to change the corners. So this first one is miter join, which is this first one right here, miter join. Second one is going to be round, which is the second one. Rounds the corners and bevel changes it to like a 45 degree cut. And this is bevel join right there. Oh, and it looks like this one actually got switched to the outside also if we wanted to match it. All right. And the last part of this, I'll show you our dashed lines. Our dashed lines are, we'll click on this one. And this one, I believe, is a six-point stroke. But we need to come over here. This is where we turned on our dashed lines. And we can make adjustments down here where we can actually have the corners. This kind of puts the dashes not on the corners or on the corners. And I think we're already set. This is a 12 point dash. Now let's go and change the stroke color to green. The second one, the dash line with the dots is a little trickier. I'm gonna change this to green. Oops, let's change this to green. Let's change it to a six point stroke. But on our dashed line, we need to actually change this to zero. It's highlighted in blue right here. So if I type zero, it will replace it. Enter. And I'm going to change the gap to a 15 point gap. Enter. But I also need to change the corners and the caps to round. Actually, corners don't have to be round, but the corners have to be round. Actually, those gaps look a little bit. So sorry if you missed that. The caps need to be round. And let's actually decrease the gap a little bit. Let's highlight this. Let's change that to a 12 and see where we get. A little bit closer, maybe somewhere in between, maybe a 14. All right, and the last part of this are the arrowheads. I'm going to select this first line. Here is the arrowhead on the left. Here is the arrowhead on the right. So I'll let you play with these. These are different colors. Make sure you scroll down through this whole list. You can even found, find the round one here, and you could change it to the left side and the right side by adjusting the arrowhead left, arrowhead right. All right. Control zero gives me the full screen. If I move these out of the way, it gives me my full artboard and hopes that hope that helps. Good luck.